Brooklyn Heights is among the most diverse neighborhoods in New York City and the nation with 100 nationalities represented and a large gay population. Built at the beginning of the 19th century with the above ground seven train, the neighborhood was planned to house middle class families who worked in the city. It has undergone waves of identity change over the past hundred years, fluctuating between periods of depression and small spurts of growth. We caught up with some Jackson Heights locals to catch a glimpse into the neighborhood and impressions on how it has changed in recent years. First, we speak with Mary Kelly Brown from Montreal, but a resident of Jackson Heights for three decades. The attitude and mannerisms of the people have certainly changed in the past 35 years. You know, up and down. Um, the businesses also have changed. All the good stores are no longer here. Uh, we have a lot of um, inexpensive stores, which isn't that bad. Isn't bad to have. The one good thing about Jackson Heights is that practically on every corner there's a hairdresser. We have little grocery stores, 24-hour convenience stores, uh, dry cleaners, barber shops. As Mary mentioned, small businesses thrive in Jackson Heights. Hope Florist has been a staple institution for over 10 years. The barber shop next door is newer, but many stores on 37th Avenue open and close their doors within a few years. Though Jackson Heights is entering a period of growth as the gentrification of Long Island City spreads further into Queens, it is still undergoing growing pains. The city has also stepped in to try and clean up the neighborhood's image, opening new parks and beefing up police presence. However, this has led to accusations of heavy-handed police work that have upset some residents. To discuss this, we spoke with Jose Barbuena, who works at another Jackson Heights small business institution that has been around for over a decade, Jackson Heights Supply. My name is Jose Barbuena. Where are you from? My from is Dominican Republic. Dominican Republic? Yes. When asked about changes to the neighborhood, he said, A lot of things, but I want to say only three. The first is the rent is very, very expensive here. The other one is the ah, I don't know for what the police stop every time the black people and the Spanish people. That's a harassment. I think that's a harassment. That is not so good. I feel it so bad because it's not one time. It's a lot of time when the police look at my face funny and stop me and say, "Give me your ID. What happened? You have problem? With your police or something like that?" I don't like. I don't feel so good. I feel so bad. And, and the other one is the oh, in Jackson High, I work in the Howard store, and a lot of people coming about the kill the the something for kill Best Buy. That's a, a lot a lot of Best Buy in Queen. That's so crazy. Despite the bed bugs, the neighborhood has a lot of charm. But you have yet to see if it will be part of gentrification of Queens. Of some concern to local residents who want growth but not development is the real estate motto, location, location, location. As Mary Kelly points out, Jackson Heights has a great one. Oh, it's still a wonderful place to live. And the other thing, the most important thing, it is so convenient to get into the city. 